as you know, the fundamental limits. This is for switches and this is for transport here. And these are the, so these are the lower bounds, these are the current trends. Um, and you can see that, in fact, the switches in the network uh, uh, using those various technologies, and this is the, the best of those switches. You recall that I had a number of different switch technologies, optical, electronic. Turns out the best was electronic, CMOS, uh, and that's what we've used here. Um, but it's larger than the transport energy, which is interestingly is consistent with what we see in current day devices. Although there's about an order of magnitude difference here and the difference at this fundamental limitation level is somewhat different. So this, this basically shows that there is a, at least for the um, switch, routers and switches, there's about a 10 to the four, uh, four orders of magnitude difference between this top-down uh, analysis based on current trends of occurrence equipment and the very best you could expect to do using a kind of theoretical lower limit but recognising we don't really have a, a totally comprehensive theory for that right now. And now we can think of this in terms of what uh, Green Touch is trying to achieve. What Green Touch is trying to achieve is reduce by a factor of 10 to the 3. Now I'm just picking here uh, switches and routers. Um, I haven't put them both together, but with that uh, proviso, notice here is the 10 to the 3 improvement, which basically means that uh, the current trends are, uh, give us some improvement. We're looking for a, a factor of 100 improvement in, in switches, switching and routing. Now, I want to again stress this is not Green Touch data, it's my own data, so it's a little different. And those of you who want to join Green, green Touch, you can join and you can find out what the Green Touch numbers are, but I, I, they're, they're not all that different from this. And, and, and so what we're trying to do with Green Touch, of course, is go from this point in 2010 to this point in 2020. And we're trying to catch up with this extra factor of, uh, of 10 squared. Interestingly enough, that uh, we've still got a factor of uh, 100 here to go. So we're not, uh, this factor of uh, 1,000, while it's aggressive, it's not impossible. Uh, although I would argue to do much better than a factor of a 1,000 re is really going to be stretching things. We all agree that the factor of a 1,000 is still a good challenge. Now I'd like to finish off with one more uh, quick point. So far I've talked about switching in terms of that very generic switching model that included the uh, uh, switch array from the input ports to the output ports. There's been a lot of discussion about the uh, opportunities to use optical switching in packets switching and the, there's been a lot of debate about the uh, pros and cons of optical packet switching and I'd like to say a little bit about that because it, it could have some benefit in, uh, in energy uh, consumption. So here is a picture I've got of, a, of a, an electronic packet switch and I'm going to compare now the energy consumption in an electronic packet switch, a router, with uh, projections of the energy consumption in a device like this where we use optics in place of a lot of the electronics, an optical packet switch. So this is the electronic switch uh, and what it has is uh, M incoming wavelengths, each with an optical to electronic converter. And in today's routers, that data is usually at fairly high bit rate. And so very early on in the piece in a router, there is a demultiplexer, which demultiplexes, this is a, just a rotating switch, to a lower bit rate and then into the forwarding engine and a range of switches, uh, back to a forwarding engine, a multiplexer up to a high bit rate and out to the output. Now I've left, for simplicity, I've left out the buff buffers on this, uh, this router. Uh, that adds a bit of complication, but it, uh, we, we can't go into that, that now. So the question is, can we, th these, these devices are very power hungry. We, everyone accepts that. Uh, they, as I showed before, they are one of the most energy consuming components in the network. Is there a way that we can reduce that energy consumption using optical packet switching? Oh, and by the way, the numbers I'm used here for uh, these devices uh, in the an analysis I'm going to show in just a moment, these are the energies for the O2E converters and the multiplexes and demultiplexes. All those are taken into account. In optical packet switching, the concept is that the incoming data is optical and can pass straight through an all optical switch to the output without having to go through any electronics. And the concept is that this can save a considerable amount of energy. You still have to, by the way, uh, receive the, inc the header of the packet with a series of optical to electronic converters. You need a demultiplexer and you still need a forwarding engine. But the, one of the big advantages here that uh, if you don't worry about the payload, if you don't want to do deep packet inspection, you perhaps only need to turn this on when the packet header is passing through. 
so that it can be turned off for the rest of the time and save uh, a considerable amount of energy. So how does an optical packet switch compare with electronic packet switching and can optical packet switching save us uh, that, that 10 nanojoules per bit, that's such a, a significant amount of energy in the, in the optical network. So this is just about my last slide, which shows the energy per switch for a range of optical packet switching uh, devices, and the green line is for electronic packet switching. And it's plotted as a, a function of the bit rate per, forget, I, sh I should have, I meant to delete this, please ignore that word, the bit rate per wavelength. In other words, um, this is 10 gigabit per second wavelengths, this is 100 gigabit per second wavelengths, which is a sort of uh, standard today. And in the future, maybe a terabit per wavelength will, will come, come along. And what this shows is that uh, below about 100 uh, gigabits per second, uh, uh, the uh, optical packet switching, whether you use semiconductor or optical amplifiers in the devices, uh, micro ring resonator switches, or arrayed waveguide grating switches, uh, typically optical packet switching consumes more energy than electronic packet switches. Uh, around 100 uh, uh, gigabits and higher, there is some potential advantage for micro ring uh, waveguide devices and arrayed waveguide devices, but surprisingly the advantage is not very big, it's only a factor of two or so. Um, and so it could well be that, that there is not a big advantage for optical packet switching because no uh, equipment manufacturer is going to uh, change the entire technology if it gives a factor of two improvement in energy efficiency. And the, these dotted lines represent uh, today's technology because we don't really have transmitters and receivers above about 100 gigabits per second. So these uh, curves will only be valid if in the future we can develop uh, optical and electronic uh, converters, receivers and transmitters that can operate at that bit rate. Oh, and by the way, this data is for a, a very big switch, uh, uh, a, a petabit per second uh, switch, which maybe is the kind of thing we're looking for in the future. So this kind of study, I think, needs to be ongoing, but I, I think what it does highlight is the fact, at least it highlights to me the fact, that electronic packet, switchings have a lot, packet switches have a lot of life in them yet, and um, for some time to come, we'll still be using electronic packet switches. So in, let me conclude. Um, I've shown a, a top-down and bottom-up estimate of uh, energy efficiency and shown that they differ by about a factor of four. So there is a big difference between what we can do today and what we could theoretically achieve. Um, the theoretical limits on optical transmission are well defined, and I use those in the analysis here, but there's not so for networks, and I think that, that's a great research challenge to think about ways of, def of understanding how we can define um, some fundamental limitations uh, of, of energy in, in networks and switching. And finally, optical packet switching offers no clear advantage over electronic packet switching, but I suspect that debate will continue. Thank you. Any questions? You say that there are several components contributing to this huge difference in the uh, top down and the bottom up, such as the yes. overhead or yes. other factors. And could you estimate what's the percentage of each uh, uh, component contributing to this difference? It's, it's hard to estimate, although I, should, I can tell you that Green Touch is working on it. Um, uh, well, for, for, well. So as I said, for example, for, it depends on the equipment. For, for, amp, for optical amplifiers, my guess is that a large part of it is the uh, poor power conversion efficiency of pump amplifiers. In optical transponders, a large part of it has to do with the multiplexing, demultiplexing equipment, supervisory circuits and other peripheral circuits around the, the, the transponder. Uh, not all of this data is readily available and the manufacturers usually don't tell you. Um, in, in your uh, analysis of the network, in the fully switched network, um, you assumed that the routes were perfect, or did you allow errors to occur to relax the switching requirements? So this is assuming they're perfect, so there's no relaxation on, okay. on, on, on uh, error rate. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, actually, I have one. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the uh, uh, you mentioned that uh, 
for uh, the uh, uh, new uh, optical uh, switch. There's a possibility in the future, maybe without using the deep packet invest, uh, inspection, uh, we can save more energy because we don't need to uh, worry about the payload. So how, how do you think uh, the, in the real product this DPI will be used or not? You think, uh, yeah. what's your opinion? That's, that's a good question. And I, I've um, talked to a number of um, router manufacturers and they all tell me that the customers demand uh, deep packet inspection. So uh, I think it's going to require some customer education if we're going to go to eliminate deep packet inspection. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, to my understanding, I think uh, uh, there, is, there is a need. I think uh, many operators, uh, they want this uh, uh, feature. So, I think so. Yeah, but uh, definitely that's one, one way we can think about. Yeah, so it could be. So in fact, if deep packet inspection is essential, mm -hmm. then uh, those curves will, the, adva the, the advantage of optical packet switching will decrease because the, there will be more energy required because you'll have to have the uh, receiver turned on throughout the packet looking at all at, 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 the, at, the, at the payload. Okay, okay please uh, join me to thank uh, uh, Professor Tucker again. <laughs>